this morning. Um, I have said over the course of the last couple days that this year's conference seems to have like a little extra celebration about it um, because we didn't get to be together last year because we were virtual. Uh, so we got to share virtual time, but not hugs, which you all know is doesn't work for me very well. I, I existed in the world without hugs during the stay at home orders for about two weeks before I just started asking people, like, can I please hug you? And then it was like next level happy dance if that was <laughs> permission. Pandemics, purpose, and profit. So if you have your phone, if you want to grab your camera and just take a picture of that QR code, that's uh, my business card. You'll have all my contact information in your phone. Um, so you have it with you if you need me for something. Um, we're going to hit some big high wave tops. There's obviously a lot of nitty gritty behind all of this conversation, um, but we're going to get through it this morning. So mindset always wins. Perspective matters. I'm going to give you an example. We love it when people say to us, have a great day. It makes us feel good, right? We are excited. But if somebody says to us, enjoy your next 24 hours, sounds a little foreboding. It's not, <laughs> doesn't sound as fun as have a great day. Um, so we have to be aware of our mindset always. The first thing we're going to talk about, obviously, is the elephant in the room, pandemics. You have more control in this environment than you think you do, right? It's easy to get caught up in everything that's going on and the river trying to pull us in all these directions, but you're the captain of your ship. Purpose, how vision, clarity, and passion drive us and what we can do to balance. And then profits, again, you drive the bus and there's more facets to that than pricing, so we're going to talk about that too. But first, um, everybody stand up for a minute. This is... Uh, one of the things I know about high achievers, and one of the things that we're terrible at, is because we're so constantly forward thinking, we forget to think and reflect about where we've been and how we got here. So, arms out wide. If you've made it through the last year and a half or two years, give yourself a hug. Tell yourself you're proud of you. Um, this is not something that we do, right? We're constantly thinking forward, but this last year has been crazy. And you have to be ferocious and courageous and steady and kind and in it to have gotten right here today to celebrate with us. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you for making this a priority to get here. You can stop hugging yourself anytime. <laughs> Good long hugs are important. Um, but I want you to think about talking to yourself like you would talk to your best friend, okay? We don't, we don't look at our best friend and be like, meh, it's been a year and a half, like you're good, it's fine, today's today. We'd probably look at our best friend and be like, you're a force to be reckoned with. I can't believe the things that you have done in the last year, right? So why don't we talk to ourselves like that? We need to raise our own energy and acknowledge all the hard work we've put in, our resilience, the days we didn't feel like going to work, that we got up and went to work, right? Um, so be mindful of that, reflect on that, spend, spend a little bit of time sometime today thinking about all of the things that you've conquered in the last year. All right, on with it. How high achievers weather storms. So there's three pieces, loose pieces to this, there's obviously plenty more, but Steadfast goals and flexible methods. We have to be clear about where we want to go. We have to have definitive goals because we can't get where we're going if we don't know where that is, right? We're just getting up and going through the motions. We're not actually trying to get to a defined place. But we have to be flexible about the journey we take to get there. I was talking with my good friend Jeremy Jacob, who owns Float in San Antonio, a couple weeks ago, and we were laughing together about how tired our collective teams got with us in the last two years about, oh, we're doing this now. <laughs> we're changing this. We're going to do this differently. We can do this better. And it was a constant movement and evolution that had to take place to navigate the business scape that we were in. 
So you have to master the pivot, right? My goals didn't change. My goals weren't any different than they were before. But I had to get down in the nitty gritty about how I was gonna accomplish those things with the way that the world changed. Two, the drawdown, that's, this is arguably my favorite. When things happen, when business gets interesting, when global pandemics just show up out of the clear blue sky, we have to get really radical about our priorities. Things that were important, that we had intended to do, don't necessarily make it in the top three list. But we have to be mindful about the energy that we have to give things and projects and people. We have to be mindful about budgets, right? There was a lot that happened this year in trying to reduce costs and <clears throat> increase sales and all of those pieces that took up a lot of bandwidth in our brains. And so we have to sit down and be like, okay, what are the things that I need to do that are gonna get me where I need to go right now? And then we have to just put the blinders on and stay in that space. It's the only option, otherwise you're gonna burn out in 10 seconds, especially, again, in a business landscape that looks like it does right now. Three, network support. Look around this room, make friends while you're here. These are the people that get it. These are the people when you have a hard week that you need to call, okay? Because people working in the nine to five, people working in corporate America, they just aren't thinking about the things that we have to think about every day. So they have their own stresses. I'm not saying anything's harder than anybody else's job. It's just very different. So we have to rely on the people that get it, that get where we're coming from. Um, and congratulate yourself often. If you guys wanna hear my champagne theory, I'm not gonna tell it on stage today, but I will tell you about it in the hallway. There's a whole theory about it. So let's talk about purpose quickly. Um, three big pieces to this, vision, clarity, and action. Vision, why, why are you even here? Why do you even own a float center? Have you written that down? Have you mapped out your why? Have you dug deeply into that why to unfold it? And where do you wanna go, right? Why do we get up every day and do the things we do? This vision statement is really important. My vision statement for Float Spa X is three pages long. I wrote it before I open the doors on the first float center. And I'm constantly checking my actions every day and the people that I hire into my organizations against that vision statement. I look back at it all the time and I'm like, is this person going to be an extension of the brand that I built? Are they gonna be an outlier over here trying to force us into something else? We have to be clear about those things. Clarity. What, is, what does this vision look like in the physical form? Clarity is important in every facet of our lives, in our finances, in our businesses, in our personal lives. Again, we can't get where we're going if we don't know where that is. But we also can't get there if we don't know where we are right now, right? You can't draw a map from I don't know where I am to I don't know where I'm going. There's, you can't, there's no action steps. You're just getting up and doing some stuff, okay? It doesn't work. We have to clearly define our own role. We have to figure out what our wheelhouse is. And we're gonna talk more about that. Um, every interview I've ever done, I've asked people what their weaknesses are. And if their answer is, well, I really don't know, or my favorite, I don't have any, um, excellent. <laughs> like, cool, well, one, you're a liar. Two, um, you, you need to sit with yourself and get, get really clear. Because we can't leverage our weaknesses if we don't know what they are. I know what mine are. It may shock you guys to hear that I'm not real organized. <laughs> 
in a traditional sense, right? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a piler, I keep piles of things. I'm not a filer, people with the filing cabinets. I think it's incredible that people are into that. It's not, it's not for me. So what did I do? I hired a librarian. That's what I did. I have a librarian that works on my teams and she, she, she brings traditional organization to, to the fluid centers. Um, I like the jellyfish. The jellyfish is one of my favorite examples. I say often, don't be a jellyfish. Jellyfish do not have muscular structures. They go where the ocean tides take them. They don't really swim anywhere purposefully. Um, you're not a jellyfish. Don't just go where the tide takes you, especially not right now. The tide right now <laughs> is not a great one to be caught in. Uh, and you are far, far too powerful for that. Um, so you can set your own course. Hire in the gaps of your weaknesses. Again, I hired a librarian. Um, I've hired a lot of people that fill my gaps, which creates a win for everybody because they are working in their strengths and I'm not beating my head against a wall trying to get good at something that I'm not that good at, right? Which means I have more energy and time for the things that I am good at and where I can make the most impact in my businesses. The drill down in this is you can literally design and live the life you want to be living as long as you know what that looks like. Um, I had to get very purposeful in this last year. There were some business opportunities that I would have loved to take. Um, there were some events I would have loved to attend and the answer had to be no because when I checked those things about against what they were gonna do to my big picture goal, what I wanted my life to look like, they were gonna take me away from that instead of towards it. So when we're clear about where we're going, it's very easy to make decisions. Action, action's obviously very important. We can dream all day, but if we're not doing, we're not going anywhere. One of my favorite things is this first question up here. When we think about the issues that we're having in our businesses, what is the one thing that needs our attention and focus right now that will solve as many problems as possible at once? So fairly typically that's sales, right? Sometimes that's money, sometimes it's staffing, sometimes it's failing equipment, right? What's the thing that you're beating your head against the wall every day and it's taking you away from the things that you should be doing, that you should be able to put your energy into? What's the one thing you can do right now to make everything in your vision statement and clarity exercises come true? What's the next stone that you need to step on to get to your final destination? If your chapter 35 looks like this and you're in chapter seven, What's chapter eight look like? Write your book, right? If I'm here and I wanna get there, what's, what's, the next, what's the next step that I need to take? So we can be very clear about these things. Micro goals and action steps are the things that will get you where you're going, but we need to be mindful about when we meet those goals too. If my goal is to make $10 million but I'll celebrate getting to $2 million, then all of a sudden I'm gonna to get to 10 million and I'm gonna be like, this isn't good enough for me. And I'm gonna be chasing this proverbial carrot and I'm gonna miss the fact that I'm in exactly the place I wanted to be whenever I wrote that goal, right? So we have to be mindful about what we're doing every day. Profit, so I'm gonna to touch briefly on this. Profit is, is interesting because especially in a business scape like we're navigating right now, we tend to knee jerk. We tend to get to a place where we're like, oh, well, we just gotta, we need to run a special. We need to drop our pricing. But that's only part of it, okay? Pricing is arguably only one third, if that, of the money strategy. So this is more what we're looking like. Persistence is interesting on here. Got a little excited about the P words. Um, <laughs> persistence is more about education and continuity of messaging right? Are we out there all the time talking about what float does in a way that people understand it and in a way that's consistent? 
And are we showing up consistently to talk about these points? But the other big piece, aside from price, is people. It will always be cheaper to keep a client than it will be to attract a new client, always. So if you have the wrong people in your centers and your messaging online isn't in alignment with the experience that people are having when they get to you, there's a disconnect, right? And we know that when new people come into a float center, they're already confused, right? We don't want to give them hurdles that they have to overcome when they get there because we already know when they get to look at the float tank, they're gonna be like, oh, all right. It's just the way it is. It's a natural inclination to respond that way to something we've never done before. They're processing a lot and we don't wanna create disconnect where it doesn't need to exist. So it's continuity. We need all of these things to be working in alignment together to increase profit or maintain profit or what, whatever your, your goals happen to be. Um, I recently, I'll, t I'll tell a bit of a personal story. Um, just a couple weeks ago, <laughs> I, again, like these are activities that I use in my everyday life. And so I was sitting and reflecting and I was like, man, I, I feel like I've just been beating my head against the wall for months and I can't figure out like what the thing is. I can't put my thumb on the issue. And I realized that I had staff in one of my float centers that was misaligned with my brand. So I had to make hard choices. I had to go in that float center and say, okay, we're all done. <laughs> we're gonna build a new team here. I've gotta build a new team here. I don't have a choice because how we got here won't work for me. And in the weeks that have come since then, everything has calmed down quite a bit, right? Every, I've, I have a team that aligns with what I do every day, I have a team that understands the way I communicate, and I have a team that resonates with my vision statements and my brand, and they're killing it. They're doing an incredible job. Don't be afraid to say, I did it wrong, right? <laughs> Don't be afraid to say, I made a mistake, I need to start over. Because that's how you're gonna win. When you get real with yourself about the fact that, for whatever reason, my, in, in my particular instance, those hires had been made in a little gap where I, I was a little bit desperate to get people in the float center so that we could run the hours we needed to. Since then, I've pared down the hours a little bit. I closed one more day a week than I typically am so that we can scale the staff properly in the direction we need to go. And it's made a massive difference. Fortunately, I have a lot of friends that are a lot better at a lot of things than I am, and the converse is true. I'm grateful that I can call a number of colleagues, some in this room and some that are not, that there's a massive energy exchange. We can brainstorm together, and I can troubleshoot problems and say this is what I'm having issues with, and they can do the same, and we get off the phone and we both have action steps to take. And those conversations matter, right? Because I'm one person with one perspective. I need outside opinions. I need people to say like, hey, I appreciate the way you're thinking about that, but it's not gonna work. <laughs> and here's why it's not gonna work. And I love that. I love it when people tell me I'm wrong. It's fantastic. Um, it makes me a better human. I hope you guys enjoyed it this morning. I'm so grateful to share this time with you. I'm looking forward to all the hugs. The hug contest is on for sure. Um, if you need that again, um, that's here for you if you wanna save my contact information. I will leave you with this. Float center owners are notoriously terrible about float time, which is silly, right? We have the best tool on the planet for stress and anxiety reduction. But here we were in the middle of a global pandemic and like everybody lost their heads. All of a sudden we stopped using the tool that we tell everybody <laughs> will navigate them through stress and anxiety. 
Dedicate a time for yourself to get in a flow tank at least once a week. Do it when your staff is there. Set up a time. Make set expectations with your staff. My staff knows when I walk in for my flow time, it's on the schedule. They'll call me if it's not. When I walk in for my flow time, they know I'm not there for business. And please don't talk to me about the client that just left all the towels in the like. I, not today. This is my time. Let me disappear for a minute. I'll be back. Um, and they're really great about holding that space for me. So I'd encourage you guys to do that. Sch schedule your flows. <laughs> schedule your flows and go get in a float tank. Give yourself one more hug. It's so great to be with you. I'll see you guys later. Thanks. Thank you.